Hello students, I hope you are all well. Today we are going to look at a poem called Sea Fever. And in that poem we look at how the poet or the poet persona wants to travel by sea. Before moving on into the poem, I like to ask how many of you all really wanted to travel by sea? Or have you ever wondered how it would be to travel by sea? If yes, then we look at how the poet describes his imagination or his longing to go to the sea and travel the great ocean. Okay, so moving on into the poem, I'll read the first stanza. I must go down to the seas again. To the lovely sea and the sky. And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And the wheels kick and the wind's song and the white sails shaking. And a grey mist on the sea's face and a grey dawn breaking. I must go down to the seas again. For the call of the running tide is a wild call. And a, and a clear call that may not be denied. So in the very beginning, the starting of the poem, you can see that the poet persona is telling us that he has to go down to the seas again. So by the word again, we can see that he has already went uh, on a journey or travelled by sea and he talks about going or taking the trip again. So, he is sort of enchanted by the beauty or the thrill of going by sea. And he says that he has to go down to the seas again and to the lonely sea and the sky. Why is he calling the sea as lonely and the sky as being very grim? It's because in the deep ocean, uh, when you travel in the deep ocean, there will be nothing around us except the blue sky and the sea. So that's why he is telling that. He is putting in an imagery that the sea is lonely and the sky too is lonely. There won't be much clouds in the deep ocean. And he says that all I ask is a tall ship and a star to steer her by. And all he requires is a ship. And a star to steer her by. What do you mean by that? A star to steer her by. Uh, it means that in those days they usually use stars. The northern star or the north pole star. It's a kind of star that guides the ships through the way. And people and uh, sailors usually look at the stars in the sky to, uh, to know uh, where they are in the sea and to guide them towards the land so that's what he says he wants to go to the sea again and also he wants a tall ship and the northern pole to guide him through the voyage and in the next few lines he says how the sea is calling for him how he is enchanted by the sea the beauty of the sea and the thrill of the voyage that very much that uh, he wants to go back to the sees again and travel around the world. He talks about all the imageries and uh, associated with sea voyage and we can see that he talks about how the wheels kick and the wind's song and the white sails shaking and the grey mist on the sea's face and the grey dawn breaking. In these two lines we can see that he speaks about his travel on a ship and how the ship environment creates a very happy mood for him. And then he talks about the sea that on which he is traveling. And he talks about how the grey mist on sea space in the early morning. Uh, it is usually the mist just rises from the sea. And he talks about that and he also talks about the grey dawn breaking. What do you mean by the grey dawn breaking? It means that early morning. Seeing that is uh, very uh, very common in the seaside. That's what he says. And he says that the call of the tide. Tide is the uh, great waves in the sea. And he says that this call of the tide, this, uh, this calling of the 
great wave is something which he cannot ignore and he must go at once so let's move on to the second stanza and all i ask is a windy day with the white clouds flying and the flung spray and the blown spume and the sea gulls crying i must go down to the seas again to the vagrant gypsy life to the gulls way and the whales way where the winds like a wetted knife and all i ask is a merry yarn from a laughing fellow rover and quiet sleep and a sweet dream where the when the long tricks over in the beginning of the second stanza we can see that he talks about his longing to go to the sea again and he asks that and he says that all he asks is a windy day and white clouds fly because only on a windy day uh, can a ship be successfully steered and then the flung spray and the blown spume what do you mean by spume the uh, spume is a sea foam the whitish foam that we see on sea so the uh, poet persona says that he wants a very vibrant sea that throws spume at him and active seagulls and uh, uh, seagulls crying it means crying means just uh, making noise and active seagulls flying above him and he moves on to say that he wants to go down to the sea again because he loves the vagrant gypsy life vagrant means wandering gypsy lifestyle means a very carefree lifestyle and he longs for that and then he moves on to say that to the gulls way and to the whales way where the winds like a wetted knife wetted what do you mean by the word wetted it means sharpened so he also says that he wants to have the lifestyle of the the free the happy lifestyle the seafaring lifestyle of the gulls and the whales gulls is a, a type of a, a bird which we can often see around seashore so and uh, in the last two lines he says that all he asks for is a merry yarn from the laughing fellow rover it means that all that he requires and all that he longs for is the happy laughter of his fellow sailors and a quiet sleep and a sweet dream and the long tricks over and he says that all he uh, wants for again is a quiet sleep and a sweet dream when the long trip in his and uh, when the long voyage is over so that's it. the poem so we can see that in this poem sea fever the poet persona talks about his longing his uh, desire to go to the sea and have a very carefree lifestyle and he talks about it in great detail in two stanzas okay and uh, the poet who wrote this poem is john masefield and he is a english poet so in this poem he uses a lot of imagery that belongs to the sea environment and ships and he also talks about taking a long great voyage to the sea and leading a very happy and carefree life okay so that's all this poem is about we look at it in great detail in the discuss this poem in the zoom class okay so thank you students